Good morning. We're gonna see the name of Jesus. Oh, but I thank you. Hey, Sha, he's a wonder. 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 Give me all in my lap. Keep me burning. Give me all in my lap. I pray. Give me all in my lap. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the break of day. One more time, ladies. Give me all. Keep me burning. Give me all in my lap. I pray. Give me all in my lap. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the break of day. Come on and clap those hands and give God a praise right there. Come on and clap them, clap them, clap them. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If you can, be seated. Just for a moment, if you can, be seated. Hallelujah. We thank God for a breakthrough. We thank God for a supernatural breakthrough. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Just for a few minutes want to share with you just for a few minutes. I have two things I want to share with you. Two things. Two things. And we're talking about the supernatural breakthrough. Now, now sometimes you could just have a breakthrough, but we're talking about a supernatural breakthrough. Uh-huh. Touch your sister and say supernatural breakthrough. And in all for you to get a supernatural breakthrough is two things I know you need to do. And it's two things now. It's not going to be nothing deep. It's something you've already heard. But I want you to know that that's by prayer and by your faith. Prayer and faith will get you there. Uh-huh. So I want to talk about your daily communication, the persistent prayer that you have to have in order to get that supernatural breakthrough. And I was thinking about, a mother was talking about the other day, she said her daughter, every day when she get off work, she calls her in the afternoon and talk with her and have prayer with her. And so one day she forgot to do it because she was so tired, she went to sleep. And so the next morning when the mother woke up, she had a headache, she didn't know why she was feeling a certain way and the daughter was feeling a certain way, but because they was used to that time together, that prayer time together, then they began to feel a little strange. And I thought about that, I said, you know, I believe sometimes that's the way we can feel when we miss out on talking with God that we come out feeling a little strange. So when you start talking about you showing up, need a breakthrough. I, I'm not talking about something you just got to pity pat around with. I'm talking about when the devil showing up, show up at your doorstep. And the only thing I'm saying is we have to pray. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what, you, you know, when we, we get to talking about supernatural, we have to understand that it's not the person. It, it, it's not the person. It is, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but it's against the powers that work where we can't see. And so we have to be prepared for that. And then, so when we start talking about prayer, I want you to know that when you're talking about a stronghold, when you're trying to break down that super, for that supernatural, the super, the soup, the super, touch your neighbor and say super supernatural. When you're trying to break down for that, listen, prayer is working on the inside. Prayer 
Nehemiah is working down on the inside. Now in Mark 11 and 14, Jesus cursed the fig tree. He was on his way to Jericho to minister and he wanted something to eat and he stopped by the fig tree and there was nothing on the tree for him to eat. And, and, and the disciples looked around and, and, and Jesus cursed the fig tree and said, you will bear no more fruit. And the disciples looked around and said, yeah, yeah, but the tree looked the same. I don't see anything happening to the tree. Oh, but the next day when they came back through, the tree had withered from the root. Somebody said from the root, from the root. And so Jesus took that opportunity to share with them about faith at that time. He took that opportunity in Mark 11 and 25 to say, whatever things you ask and you pray for, believe you receive them and you will have them. And I stopped by on this morning just to let you know that God is working on your circumstance. He's down at the root of your circumstance. Sometimes you can't see when God is working. Sometimes it don't feel like God is working on your situation. Oh, but you just keep on praying. Just pray a little while longer. Just be consistent in what you're doing and watch God work it out for you. Oh, yes, oh, yes, down at the root of what you're going through. It might be covered up with a whole lot of dirt. A whole lot of mess might be covered it up. But God is working on your behalf. Do, don't be weary and well-doing. Listen, 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 my sister. Don't be weary and well-doing. Let that come from your heart and bubble up from your stomach and say, I will not be weary and well-doing. Hey, and well-doing. Now, you have to make sure it's some well-doing. And Luke 18 and 1 through uh, 8 says, and I'm going to let you go. He spake a parable to this end, that men ought always pray and not faint. Always pray. Listen, listen, listen. Things will come up on you. Now, God didn't orchestrate them, but he allowed it. Come, come, I'm talking about when you're going through some stuff that you need broken down in your life. I don't care if it's in your family, if it's in your body, if it's in your mind, if it's back when you were a child. I don't care when it was. God, it's, listen, some things happen in your life. God did not orchestrate it, but he allowed it. And he will turn that thing for your good. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. All you have to do is believe. Ah, ah. So your prayer must align up with what God is saying. Your prayer have to be what God is saying is good for you. And in John 5 and 14, it says, this is the confidence which we have that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And, and, and see, when I say according to his will, that means that whatever we pray, we don't want to pray amiss. We want to pray what God is saying is good for our lives. We don't want to just pray anything. I know we're living in a day and time when people just believe anything, say anything, and all of that. But listen, you, we have to pray according to God's will. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So when you pray, trying to get to this supernatural, when 